So, um, basically, today's point into uh, is to discuss about introduction of Pega, and uh, what we'll try to do is like we'll try uh, try to take up a scenario. Okay, we'll try to take up one scenario, something which looks like. We'll try, okay, we'll try to take up to one scenario and compare that particular scenario with conventional programming languages like Java and .NET and also with Pega. Okay, our scenario is going to be building a web page, building a web page for JSP systems. Okay, building a web page for JSP systems. Okay. So what makes this JSP systems? He is going to be our client. So that means like going forward when I say it as client, it is going to be JSP systems. Okay, and in this web page, JSP systems is splitting these features. The first feature is there should be a login page itself. After login page, user details sh should be taken. After user details, save to DB. Okay, these are the three functionalities login page, user details, and save to TV. These are the three functionalities that, uh, that are expecting. Uh, these are the three functionalities that customer is expecting us to uh, bring it up in the web page, whatever that we are building. Okay, customer did not keep any constraints. Our client did not keep any constraints to us saying that okay you have to use this language or you have to use this many people and all so in scenario one okay in scenario one we are using java as mode of development inside in scenario one java as mode of development and with one java developer and with one java developer we are going to and with one java developer Let's just take that uh, this Java developer has written some 3000 lines of code. And this 3000 lines of code. He took 30 days to write this 3000 lines of code. He took 30 days. So. Any project in IT industry, any project in current IT industry should follow SDLC process. No matter uh, no matter what. Either it is going to be a waterfall process or a gel process. Any process in IT industry should follow SDLC process. Okay, what do you mean by SDLC process? Software development lifecycle process. According to software development lifecycle process, every project should have these phases in it. Okay, requirement analysis phase. Requirement analysis phase after this development phase. After, uh, development phase after this testing phase. And testing also as AT and UAT will be there. You know, two different testings system integration testings and user, user acceptance testing. Okay. And finally, production environment. Production. This production is the environment where production is the environment where. We will be, I mean, uh, production is the environment where end users will be using our application. End users will be using our application. Okay, so we have completed, we have completed requirement analysis, we have completed requirement analysis, and uh, we have completed development also. In scenario one and now we have to get our code tested into SAT and we have to get our code tested into SAT so what we have done we are, the scenario is we have started to building a web page by using Java language and a single Java developer has written 3000 lines of code in 30 days and now it the code has to be tested in SAT environment so in SAT environment when someone when this particular person tests our code we got to know that there are 30 defects in it. Okay, some random numbers. I'm just taking some random numbers to bring up this scenario. Okay, our SAT uh, environment.
okay or i set environment this particular uh, this particular code has some 30 defects now comes one more new term that is defect what do you mean by defect any functionality which is not working as per the requirement is called as okay any functionality which is not working as per the requirement is called as defect okay for example taking a phone number okay normally whenever we see a phone number field in ui we will be expecting some numeric field to come there okay that is the expected functionality instead of that if, if it is accepting alphanumeric characters and if it is accepting special characters then it is a different okay functional difference or else you know this kind of format differences also all these things are called as defects okay so 30 defects so this was notified to customer you know or the client uh, saying that okay we have some 30 issues and customer got very angry and he told okay bring me the complete report of uh, where these defects are there in our code okay so what we did we just analyzed in this the following in the following manner login page this is first we have to and categorize our code so that basing on that we can categorize our defects easily so that is what i did thousand lines and user details thousand lines okay and save to db thousand lines so our code is uh, written in this way so after this i'll categorize the defects so let's just say that we have 10 defects here and defects Ten defects. Okay, ten defects, ten defects, and ten defects. So, if you try to understand, if you try to understand the factors behind this number of defects, if you try to understand the factors number behind this number of defects, so the two important factors or the um, important factors will be like for this. Okay, so single Java developer is used and he is writing some 3000 lines in 30 days so that means like whatever code that is he, that he has written okay whatever code that he has written on the first day he is not able to that means like at least because of the challenge of you know re retaining the code whatever that he has written on the first day on the 30, 30th day also he may not be able to uh, write an effective code or since he is doing a java since he is writing everything from the scratch that means like out of nowhere he is writing the code okay he started with the line one and he is going till 3000 lines so that means like he is developing the application from the scratch that might be the reason for these many defects or lack of you know uh, lack of uh, understanding in java knowledge so like that you know there will be a number of factors which will be coming uh, compromising of this 30 defects so the next scenario okay this was notified to customer and customer told this time okay you are going to use dot net as mode of language and one dot net developer one dot net developer and in this dot net and one dot net developer and this dot net developer okay dot net and customer has given us uh, you know a small uh, advantage kind of point that is okay small advantage kind of point that is okay uh, he's saying you know according to customer login page is already built by someone okay login page module is already available in dot net language login page is already built by someone and he's and as per the customer okay this particular module is completely tested completely tested and defect free as per the customer this login page module is completely tested and defect free okay so what is left for us to develop we have to develop only user details 
and save to db these are the two things that we have to develop so our work that we need to do got reduced we don't need to write you know for example if uh, for this login page module in dot net if, if uh, we need to write some 500 lines we don't need to write it because there is already a re reusable module is there reusable module is there so for these two things let's just say that you know dot net since dot net is a kind of little bit advanced when compared to java so let's just say that we have written only some 1400 lines of this 1400 lines of code and to write this 1400 lines of code obviously since dot net is a little bit advanced version and we have one module less to develop let's just say that he has taken only some 14 days 14 days to develop this code 14 days to develop this code okay and again after developing in scenario 2 also we'll be going into different uh, we'll be going into sit and here we got some 10 defects we got some 10 defects the moment we see these defects first thing that comes into our mind is these defects are not you know whatever defects these defects are not there in login page module whatever defects that i am seeing currently are uh, none of these defects are applicable for login page module because as per the customer as per the customer their login page module is completely tested and it is completely different free so these 10 effects are applicable to only user details and save to db why that kind of conclusion we came uh, why we came up to that point of uh, that kind of conclusion because of the reusable module that is already available in dotnet language because of the reusable module that is already available in dotnet language that's it it may be developed by someone else we don't care about it okay because of the reusable module that is available in dotnet language we are having a hundred percent surety that okay whatever 10 defects that we are seeing all these 10 defects will be there in user details and save to db only user details and save to db only okay so again again our, uh, similarly our customer has asked for a report and we have analyzed it something like this and 700 lines of code run up okay some 700 lines of code and here also uh, out of 10 some let's just say that we have five defects okay 700 lines of code and let's just say that five defects okay it's two scenarios completed third scenario In third scenario, we are using Pega tool. See, I'm not calling it as language. Pega tool. Java language, .dot .net language and Pega tool. Because Pega is not a language, it is a tool which is developed on a Java language. Okay, so in Pega tool, in Pega tool with one Pega developer, in with one Pega developer, okay, with one Pega developer, let's just say, that you know uh, let's just assume you know that in pega this login page module is already there login page module is already there okay and user details module is also there okay with name m2 and this one with name m1 okay and this one with name save to db is also there with m3 okay m1 m2 m3 okay so what is the job of this for pega developer when we have already reusable existing modules the job of pega developer is to connect these modules in the required sequence and pass the inputs between them and make them work okay and make them work so how much time it is going to take for this one java developer to do this kind of connection so let's just take you know to understand the existing modules that he is taking one day and to connect them one day and to test them another day three days 
okay and the point here is the point to be noted here is when we are going for this kind of modularized module based development complete module based development okay we are writing zero lines of code zero lines of code so this is the first winning strategy you know this is the first winning strategy of pega zero lines of code okay everything is going to be in the form of modules only everything is going to be in the form of modules only and here if you say let's just say that this person has uh, no uh, is writing this in three days everything will be there in the form of modules only okay so even though if it is modules we had to deploy our code into sit and here we got only one defect okay when we see this kind of defect okay when we see this kind of defect when we are using reusable modules where each module is completely tested and defect free where each module is completely tested and defect free what might be the reason for this uh, defect the reason might be the connection problem so if you identify the connection problem and if you rectify it that's all the scenario is completed and the requirement is finished okay so let's just discuss a couple of more factors and you know, some four or five factors basing on which we can take a little bit uh, more decision on this and you know, uh, understand how pega is different when compared to the other things okay this is scenario one sorry this is scenarios three different scenarios on these scenarios only i'll do the comparison that is i'm going to write it as java dot net okay pega okay the first thing is number of defects number of defects so what do you mean when I'm, uh, okay where you'll be have the lesser the number of defects okay the lesser the number of defects the better it is the lesser the number of defects the better it is okay so obviously in pega ob obviously in pega we have less number of defects we'll be having less number of defects what are the reasons that we are going to have less number of defects okay in another programming languages in another programming languages okay we are writing line by line coding which is always prone to have some defects because like you know uh, a human person is writing the line uh, coding that too in line by line manner there will be hundred uh, there will be already uh, there will be always a chance for error okay but whereas when it comes to the modules you know already existing modules we have to connect them that's all already existing modules will not be having any mistake okay number of defects in pega will be less business risk business risk what do you mean by business risk okay any defect which is not identified in the lower environments okay any defect which is not identified in the lower environments and the same defect which is if it is identified in the production okay then it may turn out to be a business risk okay so you know customers may raise a concern saying that okay they, we don't like this kind of you know uh, non functional or you know uh, application which is having which is not tested completely and all okay which is not tested completely and all and uh, they may they may raise concerns and all so for example let's just take about uh, one simple example of business risk okay we have developed some abc bank application successfully we have developed this and in imps transaction in imps transaction okay for transaction fees transaction fees instead of taking you know five rupees instead of taking five rupees because of the java developer code and you know, because of the developer if you have written if you are taking some 50 defects sorry 50 rupees typo error okay if you're taking some 50 uh, rupees and this particular functionality is not tested in development requirement analysis development and uh, development phase and uh, testing sat and uat this is not identified basically 
they check to whether you know the amount is getting debited and it is uh, depositing or not so like that they have checked everything but this transaction fee somehow they missed it so any defect which is not identified in the lower environments and if it is identified in the production environment we will be able to easily find it sorry we will be able to, we will be call it as business risk okay but whereas when it comes to um, you know the the point is the higher the defects the more the number of defects the more the chances that we will leave or that we will miss this kind of business risk so where we are having higher number of disk uh, defects where we are having higher number of defects in this scenario where we are writing everything from the scratch where we are writing everything from the scratch that means like you know in java and .NET. okay I'm not saying okay, please don't mind if there are any Java and .NET developers. I'm not saying that you know Java is inefficient and uh, 50 or dot .NET is inefficient. What I'm saying is the time taken to develop this kind of effective code uh, that we have built in this scenario three by using this modularized approach, okay, to uh, to develop you know, in the same way that kind of defect free uh, code in Java and .NET it will take a little bit more time, a little bit more time. But the concern is. The concern is we don't have the time in IT industry. That's all. Okay, business risk. What do you mean by business risk? And where we have less number of business risk in Pega tool, obviously, because of modularized approach. The next factor is hmm, time. What do you mean by time? The time taken to develop. Obviously, it is less. Okay, cost. Cost also basing on time. So less. Cost basing on time is less. So how? For example, let's just take that for a dollar we are having 80 uh, for, we are paying some 80 dollars so in which scenario we will be paying uh, you know, for a, either it is going to be any developer java dot net or pega we are paying some 80 dollars where we will be having where we will be ending up with the highest budget scenario one after that uh, scenario two after that scenario three 80 dollars per hour or 80 dollars per day so in 240 dollars we will be able to complete scenario three if it is 80 dollars per day and for remaining things uh, 18 to 30 in scenario 2 18 to 40 like that okay cost basing on time will be less in pega okay there will be a number of other factors also in cost cost is very complicated uh, term okay next is enhancements enhancements what do you mean by enhancements okay what do you mean by enhancements Okay, initially in the user details, we are showing only first name and last name. Initially in the user details, we are showing only first name and last name. Now, what this, uh, they, they have, uh, no, our application is successful and they are expecting us to add few more features into it. That means like data about phone number and email ID. That is nothing but an enhancement. So, okay, enhancement sounds good, but the work that is needed to, to uh, the work that is needed on Java developer or .NET developer for this enhancements Okay, will be different because like what happens whenever we are working on this kind of enhancements Okay, first we have what we have to do. We have to understand the existing code first Okay, we have to understand the existing code and we have to make the required changes. We have to make the required changes We have to make the required changes the challenge here is the challenge here is okay are the highest priority item that we have to uh, when we are doing this kind of enhancements is we don't need to uh, uh, worry about the new features we have to worry about not to break the existing features because like if the existing coding which is already working fine if you break this because of the enhancement then uh, you know it is a very big issue so that is what is our highest priority okay so the chance uh, that kind of chances 
because like in 3000 lines we may not know which may be impacted because of the new enhancements whatever that we are trying to add in this 1400 1400 lines also it may be but whereas when it comes to this kind of modularized approach basically what we'll do we'll identify the module which has to be modified okay we will update only that particular module and if it is working fine if it is working fine we will commit the changes and if it is not, you know uh, we, if it is not working then we will roll back to the previous stable state of the module that's all okay we will be always having previous stable state okay in java and dotnet also they will be taking backup of the codes okay they will be taking backup of the codes but here if you see we are not taking any backups but we are uh, using the existing functionality that means like you know module only uh, we are just enhancing it or we are just going to back to the stable state enhancements is a little bit easy in compared to you know uh, other programming languages a little bit easy because like we don't need to write you know line by line coding again for these things we have to uh, you know in the within the module only we have to make make some configuration changes rather than writing line by line coding so like that okay the next thing is maintenance there is always a confusion between enhancements and maintenance okay what do you mean by maintenance is for example uh, for a given scenario okay let's just say that there is a project and it has some hundred modules in it identifying the modules which are no longer required or which can be optimized identifying the modules which are no longer required or which can be optimized and making the required changes is called as enhancement maintenance is called as maintenance so uh, because like what happens as whenever a project is all out with the time goes by with the time goes by what will happen is uh, with the time goes by what will happen is we will always uh, we have to always um, identify the uh, non-used areas and we have to discard them for a better performance of application okay that kind of maintenance is also easy in Pega language okay and the next one is customer comeback time what do you mean by customer comeback time the time taken to accept an enhancement by the development team okay the time taken to accept an enhancement by the development team and make the changes and deliver the updated code is called as customer comeback time obviously with the discussion so far what we had it is going to be less it is going to be less okay after customer comeback time the final thing is ui responsiveness ui responsiveness what do you mean by ui responsiveness okay screens automatically adjusting basing on the you uh, basing on the devices that they on which the application is loaded that feature is there in pega because of internal html5 functionality i'll show you once we start working on the pega okay so here if you see we have taken some you know close to we have discussed about close to eight different features you know eight different uh, scenario uh, you know concepts of development and in all the things we are finding pega is a little bit better one compared to the conventional programming languages like java.net and i am not saying that you know this kind of quality or this kind of uh, less number of defects or this kind of effectiveness we can't get in dotnet but we have to make a little bit of com uh, compromises in java and dotnet or we need some good amount of time or we need some good amount of people with high level of you know high level of knowledge so factors will be varying you know to get the same output functionality factors will be varying okay but whereas when it comes to pega if there is a regular person for whom if i teach uh, how to connect these modules and if i teach what are what are all these modules are about and ask him to connect these modules in this way and check whether they are working or not he will be able to you know we don't need any expertise knowledge in it so like that okay that is the reason many people are opting towards pega why companies are opting towards pega is if they say to customer saying that okay these are all the factors just like how i have given a demo okay if i say that these are the factors basing on which you know uh, which are going to be uh, additional points to your application obviously any end user or any client will be giving to them only so that is the reason mnc's are opting towards pega 
okay so a couple of uh, general terms a couple of general terms that we uh, not general terms in the sense couple of uh, general points that we have to discuss is whenever we work on pega whenever we work on uh, sorry whenever we are working on just a minute Okay, whenever we are working on Pega tool, whenever we are working on Pega tool, or whenever we search for Pega in Google, we'll be seeing something called as Pega PRPC PPM tool. What do you mean by Pega PRPC PPM tool? What do you mean by Pega PRPC BPM tool? Same tool. Okay, but what is this PRPC and BPM tool? PRPC. Pega rules process commander okay Pega rules process commander so <clears throat> here if you see whenever we are connecting this kind of functionality that means like m1 plus m2 plus m3 okay the background code of m1 should be executed background code of m2 should be executed background code of m3 should be executed because like these are reusable modules whatever reusable code that is there in the background code of the of this module all those functionalities has to be executed who is taking that responsibility this pega rules process commander which is nothing but an execution engine of pega is going to take that responsibility it will make sure that these kind of modules are executed in the required scenario okay, just a minute <laughs> So this Pega rules process commander is the rule execution engine that is there in Pega, which will make sure that these modules are required in the uh, executed in the required sequence, identified and executed in the required sequence, and the background code of each module is executed properly. Next is PPM tool. What do you mean by BPM? Business process management tool. Business process management tool. Okay. This business process management is nothing but a governing body which has some set of principles, you know, which is a kind of governing body for all the BPM, uh, all the BPM based application tools. Okay. What the, according to BPM uh, governing body, according to BPM governing body every project in every tool or every technology that is saying that it is a you know PPM compatible it should have these phases designing modeling execution execution monitoring designing modeling execution monitoring optimization and re-engineering all these phases should be must and should followed 100 percent in your project okay your project should support should support all these concepts then only it is called as bpm application or bpm tool so okay in regular programming languages this designing modeling and execution that means like designing modeling and development basically execution in the sense development okay so that is easy but monitoring and optimization and re-engineering see here take the java doc code only in 30 days we have written 3000 lines in one year 36000 lines in five years two lakhs lines okay so that is what is the difference so in five years if you are having some two lakhs line monitoring optimization and re-engineering is not going to be an easy task Okay, but whereas here if you see in scenario 3 Even if you have some hundred modules if you have some 10 pega developers Okay, where each pega developer will be going to and analyzing uh, some 10 uh, Modules per a day 
just for analysis right so he they will do the uh, ten analysis of 10 modules and he'll be able to complete them in 10 days so as simple as that okay so all these six phases will be completely supported by vpm tool so and that is the reason pega is called as one of the finest vpm tool in the industry that is the reason pega is called as one of the finest vpm tool in the industry okay so the next common and basically common question that many people will be asking is do i need any do i need any prerequisites to learn pega okay no no prerequisites to learn pega because let's just take one simple that is all that will be the last point no no prerequisites to learn pega because for example let's just take that a java person wanted to learn java and come into software industry he started learning java after finishing java he came to know that he has to complete advanced java as well after completing advanced java he came to know that he has to learn some db tool hence he had learned ms sql after ms sql he came to learn that he need some server server understanding so tomcat server he can he learn he learned okay tomcat server so finally he came to learn that he needs some web authorizing tools to learn that means like html5 html five so here if you see he started with one technology and he ended up with multiple technologies that is what happens in the it industry most of the times but whereas when it comes to pega all these five modules are there in pega only all these five modules are there in pega only we'll slowly discuss about each one of them when we are having in the uh, when we are discussing on this one so what we have to do is pega is a single window tool pega is a single window tool where all these kind of you know different different functionalities i'm not saying you know java uh, advanced java msql i'm not going to teach those concepts but similar functionalities that means like okay in java oops in advanced java how to implement the oops ms sql database related options server management and html so all these are implemented in pegas own way and we have to learn all those modules some you know good number of modules are there out of which we have handpicked some 20 to 25 modules and we have given them as course curriculum okay which is going to comprise of 80 percent of the pega developers day-to-day job okay so whatever course curriculum that you're seeing okay it is going to comprise of 80 percent of concepts in pega which are going to make sure that you are going to be an updated developer in and you are going to be a pega developer okay so that is all and you can ask me questions if you have anything okay probably like you know they'll start this uh, uh, classes from thursday because like they want the batch to be finalized on thursday they will be starting the batch so just check if you have if you don't have any questions so that is all for the day okay so the basic conclusion here is okay pega is a module based development tool pega is a module based development tool where everything will be developed in the form of modules only instead of writing line by line coding which is going to help us to build an effective code effective applications and high performance applications because like we'll be continuously monitoring optimization and re-engineering right so when we are continuously doing these three phases we'll be having high performance applications only okay okay so i guess we don't have any questions so that is all okay uh, these people you know like you know since we are going to start our classes from thursday so these people will share a, a one more terminology video to you people just you know uh, for the people who are interested they will be sharing that okay just see that video and uh, you know uh, be ready on thursday because like the same video i'm going to discuss it it is very important uh, terminology so these people generally share it as advance in advance okay same video whatever that i have thought of. okay we will be discussing on the video on thursday same concept okay thank you yeah someone has questions yes you can ask that is what i'm saying you can ask yeah uh, i was asking about the last part you just told 
sorry i did not get that what is it the last part like you take a developer or pega user something like that that i didn't understood sorry i did not get that actually what is it could you please elaborate actually in this uh, in this format uh, uh, that we are going to be like pega developer something like that after this yes or you are going to be a pega developer pega process developer basically yes pega process developer pega process developer in, in, yes in in pega there are two different different uh, you know uh, uh, terminologies and pega ui developer is completely okay. different because like they will be completely dealing with only ui we are going to be pega process developers okay even i may pega process developer okay, okay everybody okay. no matter no matter who is going to start uh, they are all, everybody should start in pega process developer only and then slowly basing on their interest they will be going to different different this one that means like you know pega application management or pega architecture management or uh, pega ui management or pega dashing management so like that different branches out of this one only yeah to this to is the starting point uh, like one thing to become a developer we require any it background or any something like that no 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 you don't need any it background so that is what i'm saying right no prerequisites here okay so we i'll be teaching you the modules whatever that are there in the pega just like how i have explained the demo so what you have to do is you have to learn those modules completely mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. at one point of time somewhere around 75 plus per completion of our course i'll be sharing you a poc okay where all the real time scenarios are replicated you know uh, you know that you uh, replicated in the sense like similar scenarios we are going to be worked on the worked upon in the real time scenarios okay so you will okay. be uh, getting that kind of you know real time feel also okay don't you know uh, please don't uh, misunderstand the uh, point here i am not going to show a real time project which i am not supposed to because like i am a real time explain uh, you know a developer i should not be showing the client code to you people i'll be giving you a, a sample project where the scenarios the complexity that is there in the real time project is replicated can be replicated okay so yeah, which will help you to yeah. learn completely you know which will help you to learn Actually, practically I also was, yeah i was confused about that that i don't have any it background i i belong to a op- operations field and in this one mm-hmm. if it is required if you require any it background coding or... no 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 we, we don't need any it background we don't need it background what we need is we just need some you no know, logically uh, thinking way and logically connected connecting okay. manner that's all so we don't need any any other uh, this one okay okay so because like we are going to discuss more elaborately on every topic and okay i'll make sure that you people are you know getting the concepts okay 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 and uh, kumar do you, do we have a class tomorrow uh actually topic? like i don't know on on thursday i guess you know they have communicated the date uh, dates to other uh, people you know like you people only some demos have been con- uh, con- they have communicated date on thursday so probably like from thursday it is going to start thursday will be the single uh, class on friday mm-hmm. i guess it is uh, holiday in india from monday we will resume the classes complete classes monday to friday morning 1 hour 6 to 7 pm 7 am sorry okay ist do you have yeah. any slot available in the evening time uh, uh evening time to 10 something like that actually like you know morning is the only time that i have control on myself i okay. if i go to office i don't have i don't have control when i'm going to come back to the room okay. or, yeah uh, yeah because like Probably. i don't know what yeah what what happens in uh, office i don't know right so after seeing the mail only my day schedule will be uh, decided okay yeah fine yeah yeah okay yeah that's all so thank you okay yeah thanks kumar see you later yeah thanks yeah bye, bye. thank you bye